Hey YouTube, what's going on? This is Gabe coming back at you again with a brand new video here at Trucking Life. Just wanted to go ahead and let you guys know what we're doing today. So I did my pre-trip and this is what we found. So I was checking my truck out right here right now. And I was paying attention to this area right here. It's a little bit wet right there. And it was a little bit wet right here. I don't know if you guys can kind of tell. Right there, it's kind of leaking a little bit. This hose is, was all wet right here as well. So I had been noticing that for a couple of weeks. So that means our power steering pump is starting to go out. I actually had noticed as well. Any of, you, any of you guys that drive out there or whatever know exactly what I'm talking about when you're going into a tight dock or whatever. it'll The steering wheel will start getting a little bit hard, but it's getting a little bit harder than normal now. So that power steering pump is starting to go out. So we're going to go ahead and replace that power steering pump. We're going to go ahead and replace that hose and uh, get it all nice and pretty and working again and replace the fluid. And uh, stick around to the end of the video. I'm going to show you guys something that gets overlooked quite often on these type of trucks and uh, I'll show you what's that. Alright guys, so one of the very first things that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and drain this oil. Here's the way I do it. I just use one of these little pumps. It makes it a whole, whole, whole lot easier than making a mess by getting that uh, return line off. So we're just going to go ahead and put our hose in here. And I just make it easier. I have a drain pan there in the bottom. So let's go ahead and do that. Stick this ding dong thing in there. Drain her out. Actually, gonna put it right here. All right, here we go. It's quite a bit of fluid. It's about it's about a gallon or so. This little pump, it makes it a whole, whole lot easier. All right. Whoops. And there's our our automatic transmission fluid is what these usually call for. Let's go ahead and get this out. Let's go ahead and cover this back on here so we don't get no dirt or anything in there. Alright guys, now we're going to go ahead and remove our hoses or at least get them loose. Got to take this clamp off right here and get this hose off over here. Let's see, they're not super, super crazy tight. They shouldn't be, but uh, sometimes they are. There we go. I'm still going to get a little bit of oil to go down through there. And that's 100% normal. Clamp reefs. There we go. Come on, baby. There we go. Just move it down there. I'm going to put my little pan underneath because, uh, 
probably gonna trip down below and I don't wanna get off this oil underneath here. So we'll just slide her on down there. Yep. We're hitting. There we go. Here we go. Alright. The good thing about this pump is that it's not like super super in there you know what I mean to where you like you got to remove so many things like the EGR cooler if you haven't checked that video out I'll go ahead and put a thumbnail right now so you guys can check that video out on that one it was definitely a lot more crap you guys got to remove definitely a lot more pain in the butt moments for sure okay so, uh, came over here and I left my um, my battery powered tools I usually take the batteries out of my truck because it's hot alright guys so here we're getting ready to remove the pump what I did here guys is I took off the bolts there and there it's just two bolts I loosened this and I loosened this so that you have that uh, you know, so you have something that hold. you got that leverage. That's the word I'm looking for. So this is loose, loose. Now here's the part where you guys gotta be careful. When you guys take this out, there's a gear in there. You gotta hold that gear in there so you're able to take the pump out so it doesn't come out. <laughs> and it just comes out like that. That gear in here is the one I'm talking about. It could just come out, so, see? So you just hold that in there so it doesn't move. We're gonna go ahead and clean on this their surface off so we can get that gasket off and put the new one in there. All right guys, so here we have the pump. I went ahead and took off the gasket. I tried to get you guys in there. You guys can see it's nice and clean. I went ahead and took off one of these gasket makers. This thing works pretty good. Just, just scrape it off. Just put that paper towel in there. Put some, some brake cleaner to clean that around. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what we need to change on the pump. All right guys, so we have here we have our old pump. Here's our brand new one. That's the part number if any of you guys need it. It's an Automan aftermarket brand new pump. So we gotta change these two fittings onto the new pump. Now these fittings, they have a little, um, it has a little, uh, trying to think here it has a little o-ring in there so we need to replace that as well I want to just this off sometimes they're still pretty good if it's still pretty good I'm not gonna change it and there's an o-ring right there that o-ring still looks pretty good so I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it alone The new one. Here we have our brand new one. It's very important that uh, when you take off the pump, you clean that gasket area pretty good. Otherwise, it ain't gonna seal right. And then you're gonna have to redo all this again. And uh, if you're like me, you're not gonna want to redo everything all over. You know what I mean? Just take these things, these little caps off. So back in here. And because this one was brand new aftermarket, guys, I didn't have to leave this as a core. So this one's still working kind of decent. I'm gonna just keep it around in the truck just in case, you know what I mean? Let me get some brake cleaner. it on there just in case um, a little bit of this oil and grab it on here just in case we need it so easy screw it all the way in 
to the o-ring seats and I'm not going to tighten it yet because once we mount it we want to be able to have that flexibility so that we can align the hose then this nut right here is the one that actually tightens it down so we'll just leave it loose like that for now I'm going to go ahead and take this one off this one's the same thing too now that o-ring as you guys can tell it's all smashed up see how it's like kind of like at an angle or whatever so we're gonna go ahead and get rid of that one and we're definitely gonna put a new one in that bad boy so make sure it doesn't leak all righty got my hands all full of I got this o-ring assortment kit in Amazon it has a whole bunch of different o-rings it's pretty useful has these little picks so you're just able to just get on in there like so and you're able to just get that over and off look at how brittle it is it's about to break so it's okay if it breaks because we're gonna go ahead and just match it up to a new one I believe it's that one Yep. Put that bad boy back in here. Just like that. You guys can see it. Get a little bit of oil. Just lubricate the o ring so it slides in down in there. Put a little bit of lube. The lube makes everything better. That's some right here. Just put lube up in that bad boy. And it's just pretty much just switching everything over, guys. Just switch everything over. And then we just install. Install a chain. This one in here. And I want to do the same thing with this one. I'm going to just make it kind of seat in there. But I'm not going to tighten up the top, the top o-ring yet. So that uh, we have some room. not wanting to go in there nice and easy so this one might be a little too thick let's remove this bad boy and try to get a different one let's see this one yep I think this one's gonna be it right here we'll put this one back in here because it still works Got a little bit of dirt on it, so we don't want that. Just lubricate the O-ring around. Some of the same seal stuff. Let's see if this one goes in a little bit smoother. It was getting bound up. Where is it? There we go. It was getting bound up when I was pushing it in there, so let's see if this one gets a little bit better. Yep, this one already went in. And you guys can tell when it goes in, when this part right here is flush. See how it's flush? And then we got this, this one. With this one, you tighten it down, but I'm not gonna do that yet until we we make sure where we need it at. So, now here's our gasket material. This one is kind of like a little bit of a sticker. What I usually do is I'll, I'll put it on this one and on the other side, we'll go ahead and hit it with a little bit of uh, We'll hit it with a little bit of a uh, sealant there. I like using anaerobic sealer. It's usually the one I like using. Make sure this is nice and clean so that it sticks on there. We're gonna go ahead and get this. We're gonna peel the sticker right here. Like that is. Let's 
it's pretty nice. I wish every gasket was like that. It has that little sticky thing in there and you just stick it in there when you're trying to get it on in there it's not gonna it's not gonna move on you it's stuck on there you know what I mean so right now it's stuck on there like so all right okay guys as you guys can see right here I already got everything prepped up in here I went ahead and put a little bit of that grape jelly stuff. This stuff is really, really good, guys. It's anaerobic sealer. A lot of people use silicone or whatever. I like using I like using this gasket maker, Detroit. It's pretty much anaerobic sealer. I mean, you can get it from the brand Loctite or whatever, but it just gives it that little extra security to make sure that she uh, seals up. So we're gonna go ahead and put this thing on in here. There we go. She's on there. Let me go ahead and get the bolts. And you guys have seen me do this multiple, 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 multiple times. But I'll show you again, anyways. Any seats. I've changed that before and I have no problem taking it out because I had prepped it with any seats and it just makes it life a lot easier when you're going to remove those bolts again. I like using the copper one. It's better like for heat. You could also use the, uh, the aluminum one but usually the copper one tends to do a little bit better job. So I like using that. It's more better. Threading these bad boys in. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a light torquing with this one. These bolts right here, guys, go to between 22 to 20, between 22 and 28 foot pounds. So I'm just gonna kind of snug it up with the, the ratchet here, and then I'll go ahead and get my torque wrench and go ahead and torque them down. Probably gonna do like 25 foot pounds, just kind of like in the middle. You know what I mean? So, but you don't want to overdo these guys and either strip them or break them. You know they're not really big, big bolts. If you give it, you give it full beans. You break it in there, and I mean it's possible to get it out, but it's gonna be very extremely. And I mean extremely aggra aggravating. And if you guys that do mechanical work, you know exactly what I'm talking about when something breaks where it's not supposed to break at. So, you know, just, I'm just gonna snug it up and we'll put the torque bench on it. 25. I know it's upside down, but it is what it is. God, I love doing mechanical work. Nope, I hate it. Listen, listen, shh, shh, listen. That one's done. Come on, baby. Here we go. That's good. Check this one again. And that's good, 25 foot pounds, guys. A lot of guys don't use torque wrenches, guys, but you know, if there was no torque specification, then there wouldn't be no torque specs to look up, but there is, you know, and stuff like this or whatever, I don't really do, but you know, anything that's physically on the engine or whatever, I usually like to get it done. So all we're gonna do now is just go ahead and move on that one there. Put this bad boy back on. We're gonna go ahead and now tighten up our luck nut there. Oh, you've heard me say it before, it's just a pain in the butt. Sometimes, you know, sometimes it just does a pain in the all right guys so we got everything buttoned up camera turned off because it got hot so we put these back on just the same way i took them back off put that one on that one on and the two bolts and you guys can see right there in between 
that grape jelly where the gasket was at. Went ahead and tightened it back down here. Went ahead and put that new line. Now, as promised at the end of the video, a lot of the times, guys, I kind of find myself to where I uh, show other people on this type of system. And what we're talking about is this reservoir right here. A lot of people overlook this uh, key issue. Down here, there's actually a filter. I already had taken it off, but I'm going to show you guys how to put it back on. A screw on filter goes in there and a lot of people don't know that there's actually a filter there. So anytime that you service your system, you want to make sure that you put a new filter up in that bad boy. And these filters are a little bit weird. Um, I'll show you guys right now. Open it up here. So it's just a regular normal spin on filter, but it has like holes on the bottom because that's where it sucks it sucks it from or whatever you know so every time you guys service your system and change your oil make sure you guys change the filter out so that's the filter right there it's a normal screw on filter all right so I'm gonna go ahead and grab a little bit of some oil film down there lubricate this o-ring here just like you would in anything else and all you do you just screw it in here just like this this part guys is plastic okay so you don't want to like super tighten it you don't need a wrench or anything just by hand and you'll feel it when it starts giving you resistance so right now we're still good right there gave me a little bit of resistance we're gonna do a little bit more and that's good enough because if you over tighten this thing with one of those wrench thingies you're gonna have a hard time. And what I like to do is just to make it easier. This is a type of fluid that I use. It's just automatic transmission fluid. This one uses, I believe it uses, let's see, Dextron 3. It has a sticker right here on the side and it's good for up to Dextron, you know, I filled it up all the way here. We're gonna go ahead and turn the truck on and just let it get all the air out. Usually while it's getting the air out, I'll leave this, this cap. A little bit loose like that just open i'm gonna go ahead and clean that gunk up right now i don't want none of that getting in there but even if it even if a little bit of that stuff were to get in there that's what that filter is for so that we're able to get all that good stuff out but hopefully this will take care of our problem you know normally one of the things to look for when the pump is failing it'll like start like winding like you know what i mean but this one wasn't doing that it would just start you know the number one thing I noticed was that it was leaking. And then uh, the next thing was uh, was that it would get hard. A lot of times this gets overlooked. Uh, so uh, I usually change that maybe like once a year or if I see it's super, super dirty. All right, guys, so that's how you guys get that pump done. Um, if you guys like the video, give me a thumbs up, share it, comment on the video, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.